All right, something's wrong. What the hell is going on? Where am I? Uh, hello? Oh shit, okay. Uh, all right, back to script. So if you've been following the weirder side of the internet in the last few months, then you've likely seen this guy at some point or another. He's just your typical average dad. Ah, dad feels awake and ready for work. Okay, now let's see. I've got my briefcase, computer, calculator, pen, paper, coffee cup, and eternal dedication to the corporation. Now I just need a kiss on the cheek from my loving wife to send me on my way. Cheryl? Cheryl? Where could she be? Huh, dad's always the first to leave. How will dad make it through the day without love from wife? Mm. Okay, calm down. Let's think for a second. Dad'll just wait. But Dad can't wait. He'll be late for a job. What is going on here? How does Dad know if wife loves him without a kiss? Except, he isn't your typical average dad, and in actuality, he's far from it. Dad is a YouTube channel that's dead set on a mission to become the best YouTuber in the universes. On his channel, we can see a plethora of videos that showcase his life through a sitcom styled set. The thing is, while this all might seem ordinary at first, I just want to go forth and tell you that absolutely nothing is as it seems. Now. I've covered quite a bit of completely creepy or disturbing web series on this channel, and I just wanted to let you know that Dad isn't that. What the channel lacks in terms of direct in-your-face horror, though, is made up considerably with substantial mystery. Something is wrong in Dad's life, and his problems are beginning to blend into the real world. You might have noticed earlier that Dad was speaking telepathically. You might have also noticed that his speech was incredibly rudimentary. Why is this so? And who even is this guy? Alright, so we're going to do some world building here before we dive into the dad channel. The dad character is a rendition of a man by the name of Nathan Barnett, largely known for his various roles in television, online shows, and his self-titled YouTube channel. Barnett is, to this day, extremely active in the YouTube atmosphere. The strange thing is that Nathan is well aware of this dad character and constantly tries to get the word out about how it absolutely is not him. I have music and dance videos that I've made myself. Um, anything I like and have been a part of in the music world or dance world, I will be playing. So come and please dance with me on March 9th in LA. It's going to be unbelievable. Literally, I think it will be the greatest dance night I've ever been to. So hopefully it will be your greatest dance night you've ever been to. Um, tickets will be in the description. Okay, so now i got to talk about this thing. I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible. I don't really even know how to start saying it because it's so insane. Um, I had to send an email out to like every industry person that I've ever worked with at like TV networks, commercial people, like everyone. Um, uh, because someone is impersonating me. I did this character called Dad. This is the, I'm trying to make this the short version of this story. I did this character last year called Dad. It was just a bunch of random videos of like a dad dancing. Um, I haven't done it in a long time. Someone took the, my face and CG'd me or face replicated me or something and they're making entire videos now with my face on this person and I can look at the body and the body's not me so they're having someone like uh stand in I it's like funny I guess at first I was like okay this is kind of neat but now it's like it's insane and it's like they need to stop because now it's like defamation my lawyer said or it's like um misrepresentation because I don't know what they're going to do what they're going to make so I if you, I need to like my lawyer told me 
um, I need to address this publicly and say anything that comes out from me will be on my Nathan Barnett channel uh, on YouTube. So if these two channels are separate entities, then how do they cross? A few videos before this one on Barnett's channel, there's one titled, Ignore This Video. In it, we can see Nathan himself talking to the camera and explaining that he's quitting YouTube. Oddly, in the middle of this video, his conversation seems to veer off course until we hear it slight buzzing, when he snaps back to script. Fortunately, I'm going to just kind of end my YouTube and wrap it up. YouTube wants it. I have to say goodbye. Thank you everyone who has watched. Thank you everyone who has supported me and donated. Thank you for everything. Thank you for watching. I need to just call it quits. My channel as is at an all time low. The views and subscriptions are drastically going down. If I had. Also at the end, after he walks away, we can see our dad character quickly approach the window to peer in. Over the next couple of videos, we'd see more crossovers with him. However, the most prominent one lies within this video with the blank title. In it, we can see Nathan hiding from Dad. The weird audio that we hear in this video is actually a conversation that reads as such. Oh no. Huh. He's coming. They released him. Don't let them find me. Please. So something is undoubtedly going on. Nathan claims that his likeness is being used against his will on this dad channel, and concurrently, Dad seems to be infiltrating Nathan's channel, making his presence known through various comments and his insertion into the end of Nathan's videos. Before we continue, I want to make a quick note that this series travels fast, and Dad is everywhere. Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Bandcamp, he's everywhere, and constantly, him and the other characters that we'll soon come to meet will be dropping hints and clues across this various social media. For ease of clarity, we're going to press through the Dad channel via this playlist here, called Dad's Life, as it's the only verified and canon way to get a grasp on the Dad story. Everything else, including the music videos, live streams, and Discord chats, are all extras that we'll use to supplement our theories as we progress. With that being said, it's time to dive into the belly of the beast to find the answer to the question, what's going on with Dad? Alright, so that video that we saw at the beginning was actually the first in the Dad series. You might recall that Dad speaks only telepathically, and uses incredibly elementary speech. It's almost as if he's a 5 year old in a Dad's body. At the beginning there, we noticed that Dad was sort of activated, so to speak, by this mysterious orb. It seemed to glow red when it woke Dad up, and then vanished into thin air. So who controls this? Is it his wife? A character we haven't met yet? Now, real quick, I want to let you know that this channel has a lot of videos, and so we're not constantly watching and talking and watching and talking and watching and talking. For the first 7 videos, I'm going to show you 3 to 4 at a time before we recap together. With that in mind, the next 3 videos that we're going to look at are titled Dad is Home, Dad's Dinner, and Dad's Family. Picking up after his long day at work without a kiss from wife, let's take a look at what his family is actually like. Oh boy, 
What a day. Dad sure is tired. Dad'll feel good once he gets a nice kiss on the cheek from his beautiful wife. <laughs> I love you, Cheryl. I think Boss really liked my presentation. Maybe I'll be promoted to executive worker. Then, when Dad has enough saved, he can quit and become number one YouTuber. Dad is already growing. One thing is for sure, I'm an executive dad for my loving family. Family, dad's home. Um, that doesn't sound like my family. That sounds like silence. Wife? Daughter? Where did they go? Where's dad's family? All right, family will be home any minute and we'll all sit down for dinner. Dad sure is hungry. I wonder where family is. Dinner tastes so much better when I'm surrounded by the ones I love. Maybe they went out to the restaurant? But why would they go without me? Does family not love dad? Does anyone love dad? Family? Mom, daughter, where have you been? Hi, Dad. We went out to the restaurant because we thought you were working late tonight. I didn't work late. I worked regular. What did you guys have to eat? We had dinner and dessert. I had vegetables and fruit. Mom had sandwich and toffee. What did you have, Dad? I had a can of food. I tasted horrible eating it alone. That's nice, honey. I'm tired now. Good night, Mom and Dad. I'm going to go read in bed. Don't stay up late, Dad. But what about our nightly family chat? I wanted to tell you guys about True Value's great deals. After a long, grueling day off at work, Dad returns home to an empty house and begins pondering about his future with wife, who we learn is named Cheryl. In Dad is Home, we get our first in-series hints at what Dad's trying to accomplish. Getting promoted to executive worker so he can quit and become number one YouTuber. Immediately, we'll notice that this has a direct parallel to the channel's tagline, the best YouTuber in the universes. One thing that I wanted to point out really quickly is this moment right here. Notice anything weird about that thumbs up? Is this some sort of sign that he's trying to relay to us? Is he in trouble? Let's set that in the back of our minds. We'll reference back to it when we theorize later on. Anyway, unfortunately for Dad, his family is gone, and this causes him to stress out about their absence. In the next one, Dad's dinner, we can see him sitting at a table, questioning everything he thought he knew about his family. Defeated, Dad ponders if they, or anyone for that matter, actually loves him. Soon after, we can hear a door open up with nobody there, before this strange red orb pops back in, opening the can and preparing the food for Dad to, very reluctantly, eat. Picking up where that left off, in Dad's family, we finally come face to face with this elusive wife and daughter. It turns out that they were at a restaurant this entire time. We also come to learn that Dad, Mom, and Daughter have an... interesting dynamic. Mom almost seems like she lacks total empathy for her beloved husband, and Daughter just acts oblivious to everything. I had a can of food. I tasted horrible eating it alone. That's nice, honey. Now, you would think that mom would at least say sorry? No? 
When dad claims that he merely had a can of food instead of those delectable meals that mom and daughter had, all she retorts with is an apathetic, That's nice, honey. I'm going to go read in the bedroom. It's just, what? Poor dad is stuck at home and that's your response? I may be jumping the gun here, but it almost seems like she's stuck with dad and really doesn't want to be. But is she? Let's see if we can find out in the next three uploads titled Dad is the Best YouTuber, Family Phone Calls, and Nice Acts. Maybe dad is just jumping to conclusions. Hey daughter, who are you talking to? Griffin. Is Griffin your boyfriend? Uh, dad? W what did I say? Hi Cheryl, who are you talking to? Me? Um, Diane, I'm talking to Diane. Hi Diane. I thought Diane and Abner were on vacation. <laughs> Dad is on a mission. In Dad is the Best YouTuber, we can see our main character enter the frame with a sledgehammer, presumably bought at the True Value hardware store that he mentioned earlier at dinner. What follows here is a beautiful metaphor, as Dad smashes a Felix the Cat figurine that's sitting on a pie. Being a subtle reference to PewDiePie, this is Dad's message to the world that he's dead set on becoming number one YouTuber. Jumping ahead, in family phone calls, even dad is noticing that family is suddenly beginning to act strange. This, coupled with the stress of accumulating bills, has put dad into a pretty crappy mood. When daughter finally walks in, dad shrugs off his preconceptions and eagerly inquires on who she's talking to. After retorting with a simple, Griffin, dad then asks the boyfriend question and she runs off embarrassed. When mom eventually walks in while also on the phone, dad proceeds to ask her who she's talking to. but. Something about this exchange just doesn't seem right. Obviously trying to come up with a lie on the spot, mom claims that she's talking to Diane before hastily running off. Clearly, dad's beginning to catch on that mom is up to something. But what? In the next episode, Nice Axe, we're introduced to an unnamed character that walks in, chops a piece of wood, and walks off. Could this be who mom was talking to? Alright, side note. So now that we've established a baseline for who dad is, what he's like, and who his family is, from here on out, we're going to press through the rest of the series in a more traditional analytical style, video by video. So in the upload that follows, titled Kiss, not much happens besides dad reminiscing about when he first met Cheryl. Probably the most significant part of this one falls in the dialogue about their age. Dad claims that it seems like they've been together for five eons, like it's no big deal, implying that the family is, or what dad perceives to be very, very old. At the end here, we can see dad moping off sets before a shadow of a woman pops up, giving dad a kiss. The next upload, titled Mom Vacuums, is extremely significant and we'll see why later. Mom is seen in the opening shots vacuuming the floors before she stumbles upon a magazine. A dad magazine to be exact. 
After opening it, she becomes absolutely enraged at what's in it, resuming her cleaning intensely before dropping the vacuum cleaner entirely. Strangely, this doesn't stop her, and she continues with the motion, almost in a robotic fashion. Up next is family dinner. Here, dad can be seen with the family eating dinner at the table. But as you might expect, mom is not amused. Hey mom and dad, can Griffin come over? Daughter, you know the rule. You're not allowed to have boys come over until you reach a certain- Yes, Griffin can come over. Thanks mom. Cheryl, I think we should talk about this first. I think we should talk about this. <gasps> Clearly, whatever it was that was in that magazine was extremely inappropriate. Poor dad though, almost seems like he was framed completely off guard. Why would dad look at this kind of stuff? Is this even dad's magazine? Also, we get yet another mention of this Griffin guy. Where is he? Let's move on. Dad, I need to talk. I'm shutting down the server. What? Why? You know why. Dad's been bad. What about my uploads? How will I become the number one YouTuber? What about my special upload? Don't ask me. It's not up to me. You can upload again when you reach 5,000 subscribers. Yeah, if that ever happens. Well, maybe you should have thought of that before talk. Oh, look at that. It's already off. So, and Dad is offline, it looks like Mom is really beginning to run with her blackmail sentiments with Dad. She claims that she's shutting down the server. But what server is that exactly? The strange part about this is that she claims that it's not up to her and that dad can only upload again once he has 5,000 subscribers. Why would she hold him to such a bizarre request? It almost seems like she has some sort of stake in this sub requirement. The next upload, Fantasy Story, opens up with the family all gathered and ready to go to the park. Weirdly, Dad seems to be cognitively absent up until the red orb pops in to wake him up. Immediately after being activated by the orb, Dad inquires on the book that Mom's holding and she responds by saying it's just a fantasy story. Just a little fantasy story. Hmm, okay. Dad has a fantasy. What do you mean, honey? Fifth gear, wide open. What, Dad? Nothing. Dad's just tired. He worked very hard yesterday for a very long time, and the server was acting up. Let's just go to the park. Dad seems off his axis in this one. Fifth gear wide open? Where did this even come from? So you guys remember that video earlier with neighbor cutting along in half? This next upload directly ties to that one. In Mom Home Alone, we're able to see her returning from somewhere she probably shouldn't have been with a little souvenir. Dad? Daughter? Hmm, everyone must be out. Seems odd, doesn't it? Mom was so passionate and angry at Dad because of that magazine she found, but at the same time can be seen walking around thinking she's home alone with neighbor's log. Something's up here. This doesn't seem right. Dad feels confused. Mom has been acting really strange lately. What was she saying in the living room yesterday? And what was she holding? 
Hey, Dad, how are you? Oh, hey, neighbor. Dad doesn't feel great. Why is that? Mom's upset with Dad. What did you do? Dad didn't do anything. She found a magazine and it made her upset. But it's not mine. You sure it's not yours? Yes. Dad's never even mm -hmm. seen... Dad's magazine. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. I guess it is Dad's magazine. That dirty, sly neighbor seems to have framed poor dad over here, and mom seems to just be going with it at the expense of her relationship with dad. Interesting. So, seeing mom with that log earlier appears to have gotten to dad pretty badly. In dad's chores, we're able to hear thoughts running through his head. Here, he begins reassuring himself that he's better than neighbor, and that neighbor doesn't even shop at true value, all while taking his anger out on this log. Something interesting in this video falls in the end though. When dad's chopping away, the sound blurs out before a whisper is heard. Dad and Beppin, who had an accident, was a dad and what happened to dad and I, kind of cleaning my thumb once and for all. Neighbor, neighbor, then shot the tree around, the husband and dad go to, whoever talks to him, shot the tree around. Andon, we miss you. Andon, can you hear us? Dad, wake up. Who the heck is Andon? Going by the dialogue here, this voice was referring to this Andon character and Dad synonymously. Is this perhaps the real name of our dad, or some sort of victim that's entrapped in an everlasting sleep? Let's keep our eyes peeled for references to this guy from here on out. Maybe I shouldn't sneak out tonight. Dad will be so mad. But all my friends sneak out and never get caught. Dad will be asleep by 10 anyway. But mom's favorite images are on tonight. But if she has one... She'll be out before the TV even boots up. So in this one, titled Sneaking Out, we could hear daughter scheming to get out of the house against her parents' will. In the follow-up to this, dad can be seen sitting down, looking at the sales sheet for True Value Hardware, his favorite store ever. Constantly referencing neighbor in his pathetic shed, dad sits there and reassures himself that everything he has is all around better. The one thing I want to point out here though, is this message. See it? I rewired the server. They can't see this. Rewired the server, huh? Who did? Neighbor? Mom? Griffin? Or could this be someone that we haven't met yet? The video following this is largely symbolic in nature, and not much happens. We can see Dad enter the shot with a sledge, presumably from True Value, before smashing it and taking a good, hard look at this tiny little model shed that clearly alludes to neighbors. Dad really doesn't like Neighbor. This reinforces the notion that the video where mom was home alone with Neighbor's wood, Dad really didn't like it and is letting this anger build up inside of him. Alright, so Act 1 draws to a close with this next one, titled Dad Loves Mom. It's highly significant and had thrown every single assumption that I had about this entire series into a tailspin. Take a look. Dad loves mom. <laughs> Dad loves mom. Dad loves. Dad loves Diane. 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 Ella.
Okay, so what the hell? Dad talks about loving Cheryl in the beginning, before both the red and blue ore pop in, seemingly breaking Dad completely. He goes from loving Cheryl, to Diane, then to an Ella, before a total system rewind commences, dumping Dad into this futuristic cyberpunkian world. Wait, hold on. Run that back one more time, slow it down a bit, and play. Stop. Now what do we have here? Aha! A link. So heading over to this URL takes you to a video about planetary sounds. Let's have a listen. Wait a minute. So Dad's using the Kepler 22B planetary sound during the rewind portion. But why? Alright guys, so like we said, this was the end of the first act of the series. Just so we're all on the same page, let's do a quick recap. So we have a dad character that seems like he's trying a bit too hard to be your ordinary, average dad. He has a family that seems to do things without him, assuming some sort of level of control over his actions. A server is constantly referenced throughout, as if they're either working for, or are stuck in some sort of simulation. Orbs constantly pop in, appearing to activate and deactivate Dad on a whim. This food he eats appears to keep him locked in this robotic trance. Someone left a hidden message, saying that they rewired the server. Mom seems to be doing something behind the scenes with Neighbor, leading Dad to resent him. Daughter strongly hinted at the fact as she's sneaking out to see a guy named Griffin, and Dad was going about his day in this video before being rewound all the way back to the events preceding everything that we've seen thus far. Furthermore, the sound that's played during this rewind is the exact same one that's emitted by this rogue planet, Kepler 22b. Damn, what the hell is going on? Coincidentally, the first video in Act 2, titled Be Tided, gives us some insight into that question. In this one, we're able to immediately see a nearby planet before the camera cuts to a desert. The person filming then approaches what appears to be a crash-landed astronaut on the ground, before a man dressed in all black approaches him, revealing that this guy is… Nathan? Dad? Or could it be someone else? In the shots following this, a clear love interest that looks considerably different from Cheryl appears multiple times. We can note that the two both wear spacesuits at numerous times during the video, which leads me to assume that they were both astronauts. This leads me to wonder, though, is this the Andon that was referenced earlier in the series? Also, who's this other woman? Right before that rewind happened, Dad did mention an Ella, so this very well could be her. Anyway, at the end of this video, we see this man in black pick up the astronaut version of Nathan, or Andon replacing him on the ground with what appears to be Nathan himself, before driving off into the distance. Food is then shown, and then the video ends. Now, this one was pretty wild and had a ton to unpack. Rather than scratching our heads forever here, let's press through the remainder of Act 2 to see if there's anything else we can dig up about this influx of people. Cameras. That's good. Surprising, but good. Let's see. No trip wires. All right. Let's see if anybody's home. <laughs> Whew. Just a reflection, Carl. All that coffee and cinnamon buns got me jumpy. Let's get to the bottom of this dad guy. Nobody for miles around. Might be the last time old Carl sees the light of day for a while. Yippee Kaye, motherfucker. Aha! A new guy! This video's named Private. This guy's name is Carl, he speaks telepathically, and he's shown breaking into some facility. Clearly, he isn't supposed to be there, since he acts all nervous when peeking in, so I'm left to wonder what this facility might be. 
could he, perhaps, be the one that was leaving those secret messages in the videos earlier? Specifically the one that claimed that they rewired the server. It would make total sense if he did, as this video could very well be taking place concurrently to what we saw in Act 1, except this time, we're seeing a view outside of this server. The next video on the list is what I'd consider the most significant, and at the same time most wholesome video so far, as it answers a ton of lingering questions that we've had for a while now. Take a look. Okay, so the wholesome part of that was that Dad called pancakes little towels. I, from now on, will forever call them little towels, and there's nothing anyone can do about it. Alright, back to script here. Dad actually does know that they're called pancakes, but the tone of his voice when he says it conveys the idea that he... doesn't really know how he knows that. He just does. Afterwards, he sits down in a spurt of curiosity and tries to take a bite. Right after this, Mom stomps in, throws food on the table, puts it in his mouth, and walks off while Dad sits there, completely forgetting about the pancakes while scarfing down his delicious can of food. Guys, we had the assumption that Mom was up to something behind the scenes earlier regarding this so-called server, and this episode all but confirms it. Also, the food that Dad eats every day does keep him locked in this scripted trance, doing only what he's supposed to do and not what he wants to. This leads me to the idea that, what if they're using this food as some way to control the dad character? All of the underlying signs so far, from the help hand sign in the early uploads, to the Andon wake up message, to this man in black picking a long haired dad looking character up from the desert, to Carl breaking into a building to investigate, to little towels where dad becomes curious, somehow knows what pancakes are, and then has food shoved down his throat before becoming robotic again, Everything is beginning to point to the idea that Dad is undoubtedly being controlled by this server for some reason or another. So who's in charge? Could it be Cheryl? Neighbor? This man in black? Or someone else? This is a character that I'd say I know the absolute least about. In this one, the camera zooms into her face slowly before opening her eyes, revealing that they're red and blue, just like something we've seen before. I do want to note something here. Dad has a trailer as one of the first videos on this channel. We didn't touch on it because it's just that, a trailer, but there's one parallel that I want to draw here. In this opening shot with Dad opening his eyes, look at how he does it and what they initially look like. They aren't red and blue like Laszlo's, but the both of them open their eyes without pupils, all while carrying this rudimentary form of speech. Could Laszlo perhaps be another person stuck in this server? I know you might be confused as to what I'm referring to when I say the word server in the context of this series, but bear with me. We're almost to the finish line, and we're going to drop some answers here.
daughter snuck out, the next video on this list seemingly takes place immediately following the video sneaking out. Daughter can be seen out in the street at night, trying to get a hold of, like we guessed, Griffin. Strangely, he never shows up, and she's then approached by the man in black that we saw prior. Up next is True Value. Here, we're greeted by a new character that, according to the credits, is named Crothers. This guy, strangely, is actually a man by the name of Tom Flaherty, one of Nathan Barnett's real-life friends. Over on Tom's channel, he and Nathan make videos, live streams, and ASMR conspiracy videos for fun, and lately, Tom's been claiming that Nathan's been acting strange in real life. Since um, a lot of you know my friend Nathan Barnett, um, and I thought that we could talk about that in him on this channel and just kind of like what's been going on with him lately. As we know by this point, this likely has something to do with Dan. Somehow though, Tom's likeness was stolen for this server as well. According to him and his live streams, he's also unaware of how his face is being used within the confines of this YouTube channel and frequently consults with the community for help. Anyway, let's take a look. Hi Dad, welcome to True Value. Are you looking to get the tools you need for the right price? I am. I thought so. Here you go, Dad. How about a brand new mini sledge for free? Free? Yep. And a screwdriver gun, some nice paint, regular hammer, tape measure, a way out. What? <gasps> A way out? A way out of what? All Dad wanted to do was go shopping at his favorite hardware store ever, True Value. In a turn of events that would only happen in a dream, Dad was given free tools that would undoubtedly help in building, or obliterating someone's shed. But a way out? Where'd that come from? The next video on the list is probably my favorite in the entire series. Cheryl takes Dad to restaurant to celebrate his 40,000 subscribers and orders him none other than his favorite little towels. Oh wow, little towels. Congratulations, Dad. Oh, thanks, family. I love you. We love you too. Wait. Hmm? You can't eat them plain. You have to add some delicious food sauce first. Thanks, Cheryl. Of course, the only safe way to keep that on script and contained here would be to smother those little towels in food sauce, huh? Sneaky, sneaky mom. Anyway, dad eats his food while throwing out the occasional dad joke. Strangely though, we see mom and daughter observe him eating his food, almost as if he's some sort of pet. Mom is really making sure he eats it. Also, take a look at this. Who's that guy in the background? Who is he talking to? Is that neighbor talking to the man in black? What? Shortly after this, neighbor comes over to talk with the family and greet Cheryl first. Hey Cheryl, you look nice. Hi dad, daughter. How are you doing? Mm. Hey neighbor. Hey, when did you learn to speak with your mind? Been practicing my telepathy so I can talk to my favorite family. That's great, neighbor. But the way you speak sounds more like telepathetic to me. <laughs> <laughs> Good dad joke, dad. I know. Neighbor, we're out celebrating dad's 40,000 subscribers. Wow, that's great. Good for you, dad. People actually watch your videos. Who knew? <laughs> yes, neighbor, they do. Dad is the best YouTuber in the universes. Actually, she's the best YouTuber. Ugh, Dad hates her videos. Ugh, turn it off. Seems like they have a little something going on, huh? Anyway, Dad and Neighbor have a back and forth where Dad throws insults at Neighbor about his crappy shed, and Neighbor slings snarky remarks back at Dad regarding his YouTube channel. In a bit of manipulation, Neighbor then claims that he was merely joking, 
and that he's happy for dad before getting up and heading out. Clearly, this was an attempt at making dad feel bad, but we all know that neighbor's up to something. He's gotta be up to something, damn it. Dirty, sly neighbor. That magazine that mom found earlier was planted by him, along with that fantasy storybook that she was reading. Is he pulling the strings here? Are Cheryl and dad both being manipulated? Or is there more about mom that we don't know yet? Let's put a pin in this. We'll come back to it in a second. Up next is a video titled Diane Calls. In this one, mom can be seen walking into the shop with a phone. About a second or two later, she gets a phone call from this Diane person that dad's been mentioning throughout the show. On the phone, Diane explains that she's back from her trip and needs to come visit immediately. <laughs> I'm sure. The life of an Instagram traveler sounds rough. Oh, you know, the same old thing, teaching the team at work some new forms of vortex creation. Nine to five, nothing new. You want to come over? Aren't you tired from being on the plane all day? Okay, sure, if you really want to. Five minutes? Don't you want to go home from the airport first? Okay, whatever you want. It'll be nice to catch up. We can have some wine and talk. Dad and daughter are at True Value all night for the sale of a century sale, so... What? Oh, you're not coming? Okay, well... Maybe this weekend? Diane? Hello? So there's definitely something going on here between Diane and Dad. She explained that she needed to rush over there ASAP, but the second that Cheryl says that Dad's over at True Value, she calls it off and hangs up. Definitely fishy if you ask me. Anyway, last up on our track through this series is a video titled Mom's Work. Let's hope that finally, we can get some insight into what exactly she does. We all know our main objective. If you can't accomplish that, then there is no reason for you to be here. I've been over the phases of entanglement 100 times and we're not getting anywhere. I really need you to pay attention and prove to me that you're not just mere astrophysicists. What was that? Anyone else have a comment? Good. Now let's go over the non-cloning theorem again. <sighs> okay. All right, a lot just went on there. First, we see mom giving a presentation at work before someone makes a comment and is promptly escorted out by the man in black. Cheryl then, very sternly, continues on with her speech over the non-cloning theorem before we see the shadow of the man in black write something on his notepad. Clearly, after writing, Cheryl seemed thrown off a bit, but attempted to continue on before the video ended. Now, what exactly was it that mom was giving a presentation on? The non-cloning theorem, huh? Why was she talking about this? We're already dealing with this strange clone of Nathan Barnett. Could Cheryl maybe have had something to do with this? Let's pivot to Dad's music to see if we can find any more clues.
So like I've mentioned throughout the video so far, Dad actually makes music as well, and not gonna lie, the songs are pretty damn catchy. At the time of writing, there are 11 lyric videos up on the channel, and they carry with them quite a surprising amount of hints about the overall story here. For brevity, I'm going to touch on a few that stood out to me. In the music video titled, Dad Is On, we can see Binary Flash at one point that translates to, And on command, this is bass. In Dad Feels Good, we get yet another binary flash right here at the very beginning, which translates to the phrase, Lieutenant Emily Ridley, this is bass, come in. Now who is this? It seems like she could be related to that space mission that the Andon character went on. Pressing on, in the video, Dad Bod, we get yet another bit of hidden binary. This one translates to the phrase, P19 for 7, private, with a link to this page. If we go to paragraph 19, we'll notice that the first 7 words are, I think I found a way in, clearly all being a reference to the Carl character that we saw in the video private. This, in its entirety, allows us to confidently confirm the fact that these messages are coming from him, and that he's most likely the cause of the server rewind from earlier. One last music video that I want to touch on is Dad Feels Golden. In the midst of this one, very low contrast text appears in the top corner that's extremely easy to miss. Those that were able to catch it noticed that it displayed the name, Andon. Furthermore, later in this video, Dad can be seen riding a motorcycle sideways, and if you really look at the front fork of the bike, you'll notice the name, Captain Andon Rill. This cements two things. Firstly, this Andon is definitely connected to this Emily Ridley character, and second, since he was a captain, then he was likely involved in some sort of mission. This heavily implies that the Andon character himself is this guy from Betided, so from now on, let's run with that. Alright guys, another quick note. At the time of writing this, July 11th, 2019, this is where the series ends. I'm moving in a couple weeks and so I'm not super super behind with the uploads, I'm getting a bit ahead to keep the steady stream of content going for you guys. Since dad uploads so frequently, by the time you see this, he'll most likely have quite a few more videos out on the channel. With that being said, let's recap once more before connecting this all together. We have dad a childlike and almost robotic character that lives with his wife and daughter, both of which frequently do things without him. The orbs that we see pop in seem to facilitate Dad's state to sleep, and Mom appears to constantly keep him under this suppression spell that's brought upon him when eating food. Neighbor and Mom clearly have something going on behind the scenes and seem to have framed Dad. Dad seems to carry heavy parallels to this Laszlo character, evident through their childlike speech and strange eyes. Concurrently, we have multiple references to a Captain Andon Rill and a someone that's gotten into the server to rewire it. Having made the definite connections that we did, tying the music video hints to the private upload, we can safely assume that this person rewiring this server is in fact Carl. Carl somehow caused this server to rewind, almost as if this entire thing is some sort of virtual reality simulation, and as a result, we were thrown into this futuristic cyberpunkian world. Also, during that rewind, we get an audible reference to the planet Kepler-22b, and lastly, in one of those music videos, we can see a message from a Lieutenant Emily Ridley carrying a definitive connection to Andon Rill from the video Be Tided. And there we have it. Sort of. You see, like I said earlier, Dad is everywhere. And I mean everywhere. Constantly updating us with clues and hints on Discord, Twitter, and wherever else you might run into him, there is a ton to compile and work with. For brevity, I'm going to go forth and present to you the Dad's Chord, a Discord server based around this series that was absolutely pivotal in helping me figure out what's been going on. Here, I was able to converse with and befriend the incredible people that are in there, and along the way, and coincidentally, there have been various other canon characters that pop in, 
filling in parts of the story and giving us an extra layer to interact with. For instance, this strange man in black that we kept noticing throughout the series has a self-titled account. Carl, as you might expect, goes by Private, and Tom Flaherty, aka Crothers, makes numerous appearances as well. So with this in mind, and so I don't run your head in circles, I wanted to clear the air on a few things. And on, and on, and on. This was actually confirmed on Discord by Carl to be the guy from Betided, so we were correct on that theory. This is not Nathan, but merely a separate character entirely that conveniently just looks like him. Confusing, I know. According to Carl, this Andon was on a space mission with his wife Ella and their lieutenant, Emily Ridley. So backing up, you might recall that low contrast text overlay from Dad Feels Golden that says Andon. Furthermore, in the video Dad's Chores, we heard that female voice pleading for Andon to wake up, and in Dad Feels Good, the binary flash translated to, Lieutenant Emily Ridley, this is base come in. These all heavily hint at the fact that something or someone is being covered up, and they're hell-bent on getting out. Now this makes you think, if Nathan is the one freaking out about this doppelganger, but concurrently has an entirely separate space explorer look-alike by the name of Andon, is Dad really using Nathan's likeness for his own gain? Back to the music videos. There's one... One lyric in the song, Dad Feels Good, that has seriously stuck with me ever since I heard it. I could be way off the mark here, but I'm going to run with it. Take a look. Good. Some things that make Dad feel good are can of food and Kepler V are perfect point. My little sweet, our daughter's hugs me. Some things that make Dad feel good are can of food and Kepler VR can of food and Kepler VR, hmm? So here's what I think is going on. This dad character was created by Nathan Barnett. If we head back on his channel a couple years, we can see various dad videos from long, long ago. Nathan is an actor, so he plays the part of various characters all the time. In this web series universe, Andon is a space explorer with his wife Ella, as shown in Betided, and Emily Ridley, their lieutenant. I believe that they went on a space mission to this Kepler 22b that's constantly referenced. Somewhere along the way, this man in black that we keep seeing had followed Andon back to Earth. And when we see him crash landed in the desert, the person that goes to capture him is this man in black himself. I believe that somehow, Andon's mind was wiped entirely, and he's undergoing some sort of cognitive experiment in this Kepler VR system. The medium for executing their experiment is YouTube the YouTube server, to be exact, and the persona that's being forced into Andon's wiped mind is this dad character that the man in black must have gathered a liking to from Nathan's channel. With that in mind, Carl is potentially an old friend of Andon and seems to be our inside investigator into this whole thing. In that private video, we can see him breaking into a building that carries a direct metaphorical tie to what we can assume to be the YouTube server. Dad constantly makes references to obeying the server. So what's the deal? Are there rules to follow? And if so, what are those rules exactly? Well, for Dad, it's getting as many subscribers as possible by being as likable as he can be. For us, the general audience, it's subscribing to him. This subscriber count is pivotal in the series, and Dad seems to be almost hypnotized into getting this number up as high as robotically possible. At times, we almost feel bad for dad. Mom, daughter, and neighbor are clearly up to something, and the man in black can be seen anytime dad's out and about. Here's him in dad's music video. Hell, here's him talking to neighbor in his 40k subscriber special. Clearly, everyone around dad is complicit in some sort of experimental scheme, and the game master behind this has got to be this strange man in black. So why doesn't dad notice? Why doesn't he rebel or try to get out? Did Andon just vanish? Not quite. You see, like we theorized, his mind was wiped, which explains his rudimentary vocabulary and strange behavior that almost seems like he's trying to be this stereotypical dad that's all too stereotypical. He has to work at company, love family, eat food, and always, always obey the server. Speaking of food,
Did you notice how in Little Towels, Dad wanted to eat the pancakes and even went as far as to give them a try? Right after this, Mom popped in and replaced it with food, and when she forced him to eat it, his demeanor snapped back to script, almost as if it's some sort of personality suppressant for him. What if these pancakes were one of Andon's favorite foods, which led to his knowledge of, and curiosity, to try it? It almost seems like they're keeping Dad totally brainwashed for their gain. This is further supported way back in that video, Dad is home, where he makes the help me hand sign. Is this possibly the suppressed personality of Andon poking out for some sort of plea for help? That's honestly what I'm led to believe here. Dad is stuck in this Kepler VR system, run at the mercy of the YouTube server. Dad says Kepler VR and food make him feel good, but ironically, these two things keep Dad locked in this artificial trance where he goes through his daily life stuck on this TV set. This VR has what seems like endless capabilities, since in Dad Loves Mom, it rewinds everything that played out on the channel up to that point and jumped to some unknown, cyberpunk looking world. It all seems like manipulation. Manipulation by the man in black who is clearly working to build influence in this strange server through YouTube subscribers. In this series, influence is power. Power that everyone around Dad is working to reap. Dad is being used here, used against his will as a character that's extremely likable. And that's the thing, Dad is likable, and surprisingly so. I guess the only way that we can really know what will happen when Dad becomes number one YouTuber is simply to subscribe to him. Dad is on a mission. Who this mission is for, exactly, is currently unclear. He's growing at a rapid pace though, and I'm logged in ready to see what the real goal of this channel really is. Someone recently asked me what my favorite web series or ARG is so far, and to be honest, it might have to be Dad. This expanded universe that's being built right before us is one of the most fun, enjoyable, and unorthodox that I've seen in quite a while, and I'd like to commend Nathan Barnett a million times over for having his likeness stolen by the man in black. Thank you, Nathan, for having your face stolen. This is incredible. Dad is one of the most interactive series that I've ever seen as well. This adds such a level of heart and soul to an already sprouting gem of a series, and just makes it that much more fun. Speaking of interaction, I have even had a run-in with Dad. And it was... something else. I was given a gift, and beneath my photo was a code. Scarlet sees all. Do with that what you will. Alright guys, so you know what to do. This series is weird, it's puzzling, it's ominous, but most importantly, it's so much fun. Now enough of my rambling, it's time, go sub to dad and go join the incredible dad's cord. Because now, we're all on a mission to make him number one YouTuber, together. I'll see you in the next one. I love you all, and good night.